Well, that is right, Lauren. If this plan moves forward, they say that they'll have to make cuts. And outside groups note that the state, with its record high revenues, is in a somewhat different position than local governments when they're looking at their budgets. I think this was a little bit unexpected because the discussion uh, at all the times had really been about at the state level. Westwood, Kansas Mayor David Waters says the legislation stripping local governments of the ability to tax food would punch a giant hole in many cities' budgets and explains the impact in a joint letter from Johnson and Wyandotte County's Council of Mayors. In a city like Westwood, frankly, a lot of our sales tax comes from those types of food uses. Uh, restaurants and grocery stores and such. That would impact our ability if we were to lose that revenue. Again, that could wipe out potentially 30% of our local revenue. For our coalition, we're, we're remaining neutral on that part of the legislation um, and think that the local governments know best. Andrea Clark with Casey Healthy Kids has been supportive of the move to remove the state food sales tax and improving food affordability. But she also says removing the local food sales tax is unstudied with a lot of unknowns. Know that over the last couple of years, the state has had uh, kind of record setting revenues and we know that the state can afford to eliminate the sales tax on food. Local governments are each uh, unique and different this is removing local control uh, from our local cities, our ability to manage our own financial affairs. Now, Kansas State Senate President Ty Masterson did send us a statement saying that he is supportive of this move because it matches campaign rhetoric, bringing food taxes in Kansas down to zero. And he also says that this plan, at least at first, allows for local governments to be reimbursed through a state fund. $220 million has been set aside, Lauren, but that fund would need to be replenished over time by future lawmakers.